we have hopefully, in the course of the evening, touched your heart, touched your spirit, touched your dancing hips. For our next act, we're going to challenge your mind. Please, welcome to the stage, Christian Griffin. Okay, so I did not prepare for this, and I was sitting like right there, and I was like, am I going to do this or am I not going to do this? So I got up, went backstage, and I was like, okay, we're going to do it. Um, so I'm applying to med school this year. Oh. I got into med school last week. Yeah. Um, and you live in New York City, and uh, you know you need to you need to run in order to stay in the same place. You need to make some money. So I tutor rich children in math and science. Yeah. It's wonderful. They bill me at two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Yeah. I get paid seventy five. <laughs> But it means that I, the other day I was asked to explain the word phenomenon. I was, it was an eighth grader, it was English, really, when I was tutoring. But he was asked to explain the word phenomenon, right? And usually when the people ask me to explain something, I'm like, yes, I have an answer and I can tell you exactly what. And I did an okay job. And I was thinking about it, I was like, well, scientific phenomenon. Um, pretty much anything that someone can give me, I can give you at least a bullshit explanation of <laughs> what's going on with the science of it. And I was recently called upon by larger powers than myself to come up with the conception of a higher power, and I like figured out that to me, like, why are we all here? We're all here because the strong force held the nuclei together, and the weak force is beta radiation, and there's electromagnetism that holds our atoms together and keeps our DNA annealed, and then there's gravitation, which keeps things... Okay, anyways, there's four of them. Um, so the talent that I think I'm going to try and do is I want someone from the audience to give me a phenomenon, you know, something simple, and I will geek out about it for a hot second. And if it works, then we'll do a second one. <laughs> and if it doesn't work, it's going to be super awkward, and we're all going to remember the fizz wings were awesome, like, ten seconds ago. <laughs> yes? Old English banking regulations. Old English <laughs> banking <laughs> regulations. <laughs> These are banking regulations about England but like in the olden days, olden days not about malt liquor. Yeah, not about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're talking like the South Seas. I would like to know about the South Seas Company. Okay, well, there this is go. history, yeah, that's which is not science, girl. But, but ever since the dawn of time, right, humans have needed some way to exchange goods and services, and like the. The abstraction of money is one of those ways that we get to do those things. And if we think about money, my dad was an investment banker, and both my sister and I are going to be doctors for good reasons, because investment banking is. Anyways, um, <laughs> as much as I kind of shit on those abstractions and hate, like, I just want to plug in my income to a big bucket and plug in all of my, like, outflowing money into the same bucket and just hope the level of the bucket stays where it's supposed to be. Like, I don't want to have to plan at all. I appreciate that that abstraction, old English banking regulations, has let our society flourish and capital investments means that we can build things like huge fucking boats. Something more physical, maybe? <laughs> yeah, right over here. Spooky action out of distance. Say that again? Spooky action out of distance. Spooky action. Is this a reference that I really don't understand? It's a Glenn Ritchie. Quantum song. mechanics. It's a reference to quantum mechanics. Spooky action. Spooky action. What? Okay, so, oh, the spooky action, oh, I understand. Yeah, I flip this, I flip this neutrino over here, and that neutrino flips over there as well. Exactly. Well, so, okay, I, you know, what we know about the world is, like, we think we know a lot, right? And, like, okay, and Zola's so a doctor, almost a doctor. I don't know if you guys didn't know that. She's a fourth year med student, so she's a badass. Um, but, uh, you know, you go to the doctor, and you're like, I think that uh, they know how to fix me, and, like, we know this much about the world, and there's like from here to Cabo of stuff to know, right? So like quantum entanglement, right? Like you somehow get two nucleons, two particles to actually associate with each other, and you separate them, and over over thousands of distances, like one flips and the other flip. How the fuck does that work? The point is that we still don't fucking know, and what that really means is that we don't know way more than we actually know. And, and with, like, 
like there could be a connection that connects them, right? Like right now, hundreds of millions of neutrinos are flowing through our bodies. We didn't, we don't feel it, right? Um, and like, you know, I was thinking about this the other day. You know like waves, okay, waves, only interact with things that are about the same size as they are. So if the wave is larger than you, it doesn't interact with you. This is why radio waves are safe, and they're everywhere that pass through our bodies, whereas gamma rays are itsy bitsy, and we'll fuck you up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so like, yeah, baby. Um, if you are like an alien, like, could it be that aliens are just like really big waves? And like, we're not gonna, like, they are here, right now. <laughs> they're here right now, and we don't know they're here because they cannot interact with us, and they don't know we're here because they cannot sense us. So anyways, um, one more thing that I'll get out of your heads. <laughs> Thanks for that dream. That's awesome. <laughs> that is a swell pile of bullshit. I, I know. Yeah, other Christian. Other other Christian. Gravity lensing. Gravity lensing. Wait, can you, what is lensing again? Oh, we're talking about gravitational waves? Gravitational waves. Well, yeah, but I don't know everything in the world. <laughs> the word lens, we have a big ball of gravity. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> right there. So we have like, um, okay, so we have like normal relativity, right? And then we have special relativity. And like we do a lot of these scientific things on the surface of the Earth, which gives us like this interesting perspective suck on whether or not things actually hold true as you go throughout the universe. And so we have Newton's laws, Newton's laws. We got three Newton's laws, right? And they work pretty well. Like, I drop the apple, it hits someone on the head, you know, whatever. I push the thing on a friction on the surface, and it goes forever. Um, the thing is that when we got into space and we started doing these ex experiments, we realized that gravitation doesn't exactly work the way we want it to. So, right, like, big G, M1, M2 over R squared is not always true. And so we created a different theory, which I actually don't know that much about, but it involves <laughs> looking at the way that gravity bends the space the fabric of space-time. Um, which means that if you have really, really massive bodies like black holes, but, or even planets or stars, um, then as you get closer, the space-time, like, I kind of, like, it's like 80s computers, um, <laughs> that, like, net thing kind of, like, bends in towards the center. Okay, anyways, that was me bullshitting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and I think that there is one more thing, so I'm going to turn it back over to our handsome, handsome, by the way. Yeah, good job. Alright, well, almost at the end of our night, we want to take a quick second to thank some people. Thank you to our writer's assistants, props, masters, understudies, all our fans. Follow us on Twitch R. Yeah, baby! And um, as a final thank you to all of the performers, let's hear it for all the performers. If you perform tonight, please come back and stage. Uh, one final, uh, one final curtain call. And in all sincerity, um, we are so thankful for all that you do to make this amazing cruise run every year. So, uh, so thank you very much. We have one more performance tonight, and uh, the person performing is all of you and us. We're going to make a conga line. So start it up here, start it up here. Audience members, come on up, join the conga line, start it over there. If I don't see everyone in this room connected in one conga line, I'll feel sad. Who's the head of the line in this direction? I'll be the head of the line. The head of the line is right here. So, thank you all for joining us tonight. We're going to end this the way that we end every single Sap Town show in a comfortable line. All the Sap Town shows will end like this. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. One second. And let's hear it for the production crew.
Let's go.